I'm pretty sure we're good. All right. Let's go. Can't, can't you see my hairline? No. Brought to you by some guys on the internet. This is getting tabled. With your hosts, Jason the Bruce. You guy! George the Yang. I hope you're all entertained by my inaptitude. Jason, a.k.a. Major Socks. We've been doing this and talking about various stuff. One of the stuff. Now sit back, relax, and get tabled. Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and right next to me is not... George, because George is the dirty stop out that listens to the real people that run the house, and those people are the dogs. Uh, he's also too lazy to actually do any real work. Uh, but I do have the more important man here, more important than us both. It's Major Sock. How's it going, everyone? Yeah, George decided to have a dog show today, so he ran out on us. Yeah. Frozen doggies. So, oh well, it's good to be back. Yes. On episode 80? Episode 80, yes. Uh, thank you to our Patreon for supporting us. Uh, if you enjoy our content and would like to consider supporting us, patreon.com slash getting tabled. It's only $2 a month. Gives you early access to almost all of the videos that we do. The video edition of this podcast is available to Patreon for the first five days before the rest of the world. So it means that you would be able to see it when it goes live and not the following weekend. But otherwise, I think it's time for some news. Newly received or noteworthy information, especially about recent or important events. All right, first up on the news is some news for TT Combat. Uh, and this is what their next Kickstarter is going to be. So their next Kickstarter is going, it has the feel of something that's very dark and in the future, it's a very grim kind of future where there's lots of battle all of the time. Uh, we have halflings in space uh, with a tank designed by Dave Lewis. Yeah, so I like it because it, you can see the artistic style between Drop Zone, Drop Fleet, and what he's bringing to this tank. Yeah, I mean, so. when we were talking about this earlier off camera, uh, you were saying it, it has some, it has the feel of UCM type stuff, UCM, which I can yeah. say. It's kind of, like it's it feels... Like it could be something from, you know, 30,000 years or in even, the future. Or even, some, or even some of the Resistance stuff. Like the big Alexander tanks and, and the old Zukovs that the Resistance had for their army. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah. We've only got the one hero that's been revealed so far. Um, and obviously, we've got some terrain down here as well, which is all really nice. Rubble that you would kind of expect in that 40k Grimdark type thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as much as I'm being facetious and jumping around it, I mean, that is clearly the generic game. I mean, it, it would either be that or it would be um, Stargrave. Yeah. Re and realistically, like they, where you would put them. I like how they described how they make their scenery, how they just take the old miscasts and just grind it down to make it work. Yeah. So that that's the really, really important thing here. There's actually legitimate new technology that's happening. Um, so they found a way to recycle their resins that didn't work and grind them down into, yeah, like you said, literal tiny chunks uh, to bring them back. That's, environmentally, this is something that's very important. Especially, well, yeah. if, if it works the way it's supposed to, environmentally, this is something that's very important. Uh, we don't know a lot yet. We don't have an exact start date, but we do know that it's going to be in June. Um so it's also worth noting that this will be under Troll Trader, which is the umbrella over the top of TT Combat. That's usually where most of their Kickstarters happen. Not all of them. There yeah. is a TT Combat one on there as well. I think they might have launched one under TT Combat accidentally at one stage. Um, I'm going to be interested to see where this goes. I mean, obviously, I want to see more because yeah, for sure, th th this is just a little tease. Uh, mm -hmm. And hey, Michelle, like I said initially, we've talked about it. You can stop telling us we have to talk about it and how disappointed you were that we didn't talk about it. Because we've talked about it. Now be quiet. <laughs> All right. Moving on to TT Combat, because we haven't talked about them for so long. 
No, and this was the best news today. Yeah, because the UCM finally have their ship. No, not their ship. They finally have their the behemoth. behemoth. Um, yeah, the monster. And, yeah. and this is a beef too, just looking at it. I mean, so all of them are, but this one. Things that come there. to mind, Mech Warrior or Battletech. Yes, I know it's the yeah. same thing. Um, Metal Gear Solid. So. Uh, there's a bit a lot of comparisons made to Metal Gear Solid. And fifth, too rightly. Uh, I really love this design. I mean, yes, it does feel like that, but it doesn't, like, this is very much its own thing. Yeah. Um, the, I like the leg design because, I mean, they're single legs, but they have two feet. It kind of, like, it yeah. makes a little bit more sense to me visually. Uh, plus, it's I unique, agree. Which is I agree. I do like that concept of uh, having those two small hind legs to help support it, but then it's moving all on one, on two legs. Yeah. Now, there is two versions of this. We have the Japan, and I'm forgetting what the other one's called. America. Ah, oh, it's Japan and America. That's right. So um, Japan has two huge Gatling ca cannons that, according to its description, can just tear through buildings and small armored stuff. Yeah. And then it also has four, I think it's four anti-behemoth style missiles, yep. which if you look at the pictures, yeah, they look like anti-behemoth missiles just with the, them sitting on their shoulder pads. And then the America has two massive rail guns that just reminds me of, hey, let's just take this rail gun from Drop Fleet and strap it onto a behemoth. I mean, that's pretty much what it looks like pretty much uh, i i really love the fact that i mean the behemoths were something that we were excited about like what 18 months ago uh and the more we've seen them, the, the more we've seen that. them the more we've got excited and i like the fact that all of them have like they very clearly have designs where you can kind of customize them a little bit but you can see there that there's that those legs are very clearly going to be uh posable um, I really like this. Um, and, the only thing I'd probably was, say is I don't think it's really pinnable. I don't think it's pinnable, but I think you can magnetize it very, very well because you got the two main cannons, either one that could, you could easily magnetize it. And then depending on how yes the, the hatches are for the missile, the different missile pods, you could easily magnetize that as well. It's been designed by one. Dave Lewis. There's no way it won't be magnetizable. I agree. Um, so. um, but I just realized the whole pinnable thing doesn't make any difference because there's no base for it anyway. No. It doesn't need to, it doesn't need to be pinned. I mean, the parts maybe, but yeah. I, I really like this. That's not the only thing that's new this week. Oh, this is on pre-order for June 10th. So you can pre-order it now, but it won't ship until next week. It won't ship until June 10th. We also yeah. have scenery coming, which is also resin or drop zone. So we have these bunkers. They're so being the bunkers sold as a complex. Cold. Are they? The bunkers, yeah, the bunkers were early on stuff. They actually... Um, ah, I thought these were new. No, they may be new sculpts, but they had bunkers like this um, back when Drop Zone first came out. Oh, so this is, um, before, uh, this is before I was familiar with Drop Zone. Then. Yeah, before okay. this is well before Drop Fleet. Um, so these maybe should be some new sculpts that uh, Dave has created. But I remember seeing some bunkers of some sort um, in the early days of Drop Zone. But it is cool to see these coming out because there are some scenarios where you can take over these bunkers and use them and the, and the weapons that go with them. So it's, yep. it's pretty cool to see these coming out. And then the wrecked highway accessories with all the torn buses and old cars look amazing. I'm going to have to probably get a couple of sets of those because yeah, I love those. scattered terrain for the... That's perfect. And even those rooftop fittings, I mean, all the ducks the industrial air ac ducks those look pretty cool too that you could put on top of your buildings and stuff like that to, to yep. make them pop a little bit better hey so. bots bot war people these are perfect for bot war you want some scatter terrain and you just like i realize the bot war is not necessarily supposed to be like a ruined armageddon type place but if you want to have something that's going to be kind of ruiny these are perfect scale for bot war absolutely perfect uh, and hey you got some you got clean stuff there too um i suspect no no there's no suspect about it i'm definitely going to order a set of these at some point 
Uh, it's just a matter of when that happens. Mm-hmm. No, I, and, and look I need at the pictures. Yeah. yeah, looking at the pictures that go along with the the bunkers and the and the scatter train of the buses, the highway, they look awesome with those. Yeah, the the actual pieces of drop zone sitting there next to them. Especially like the the pictures that have the real heroes of the game in the background, the scourge. Yeah, so good. Uh, sh- no, disgusting. No, like, <laughs> it's it's nice to see that the real heroes of the game are being shown off, and they're getting ready to kill these filthy, horrible villains in the front here. The UCM all need to die. It's just I'm sick of their propaganda. The UCM need to be eradicated. No, that the heroes of this whole, whole thing is the PHR, my friend. Come and tell the you... they're not in the picture. They don't matter. That's true. Fine. And don't get me they started. Were... Don't get me started on the space hedgehog. George isn't here. He can't defend this. <laughs> now I although I really I, love this. Although on drop zone side, I play the hedgehog. So I thought you played both. Oh, okay. I do. I do. I play uh, PHR and Shaltari, and, but I started out playing uh, Shaltari primarily. Because I got the guy I got into drop zone with, he started playing PHR at the same time I wanted to, and so we're like, well, so we don't have two factions of the same. I'll go with the Shaltari because I like their gate aspect, and so that's why I went with Shaltari. Yeah, uh, I just realized something. Uh, that initial picture doesn't actually show everything. There's more cars. There in, are. There's, there's in the very couple... last picture. There's more cars, not in those initial ones. Yeah, yeah, that and some actual school bus. Because you see a regular retro bus, yeah. and then you see a school bus that's been smashed to, with other stuff. So there's a lot that goes with this. So yep. well worth the twelve pounds that, and we know TT Combat has had great prices for all their stuff. Yeah, but to get, but to get all this for twelve pounds, that's not a bad price at all. And I'm one hundred percent buying them. I love the retro aspect of some of these cars too, with the fifties yeah. and sixties kind of style, and then they some of the futuristic stuff at the same time. It, it's Pretty cool mix between the two. Yep. Uh, this last one, I'm fairly sure this is a returning one as well. I definitely recognize these. So these are rooftop fittings for your buildings. These are resin. There used to be a kit like this for the there old was. kits, and I'm pretty sure yep. this is the same kit. You've only got the two pictures. Realistically, you don't really need more than that. It just it adds more detail to the top of the buildings, uh, lets them look a little bit more than just, you know, Cardboard or, or, or what it's called. MDF. Or MDF. Yeah. yeah. And you're probably going to need probably two, maybe three sets, depending on how many buildings you have and how much you're going to want to put on the rooftop, but still be able to put your infantry down. Um, your, your other I'll option be- with this, realistically, is if you buy a whole heap of it, you've got a factory floor. Yeah, that too. That but if, too. If, you, if you're playing Bot War and you want a factory, this is it's all machinery for your factory. I yeah. kind of like this idea. Yeah, because those, those could almost be enclosed conveyors of some sort that's running across your your factory floor of, or some sort exactly. processing machine that's yeah, some kind of a processing machine that's smashing stuff from the molds or whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's a perfect idea with, with bot war. It would only be a partial cover in bot war, uh, but I do I do kind of like that idea, and it adds it, it adds. And mm-hmm. giving options. Options are always a good thing. All right. Now, if there was a George among us, George would probably really like what we're about to look at, but he's not here. So George can go and continue to smell because he's filthy and we don't like him. Uh, War Cradle have some really, really nice looking buildings come out. These are all definitely not Viking yet. Definitely not. No. Yeah, this is definitely 100% Viking Um, So this is, I mean, they're not labeling this for for um Wild West. This is more generic. Uh, but this stuff is amazing. I've got the long haul on screen at the moment. Which yeah, I've got that one too. Sold by itself. Um, the roof is removable. The inside is detailed. There's yeah. a fire pit in the middle of it. Is it a fire pit or is it a... T- no, it's a fire pit. It's a fire pit of some sort. It looks yeah. like a, just a big, huge, like, hall that warriors would go to right before battle and just... Or after battle and 
just drink their heart's content. Yeah. Uh, this is definite. This is an amazing piece of terrain. I love this. I mean, obviously, it's going to be very specific. Uh, oh, you could probably use this in 40k within reason. I mean, for the space wolves, yeah. they are kind. But even then, I, I don't really. I mean, you'd have to stretch it a little bit. On the side, it says War Cradle, Age of Sigmar, which I can easily see yep. in that scenery. Um, but I think even some of your other fantasy pick your genres out there games could easily have this. I mean, even some of the Lord of the Rings stuff, possibly, just paint it yeah. up a little bit differently. Not everything so, has to look exactly the way it is in the game box. Or the exactly. Movie. I mean, yep. even Star Wars, like, realistically, like, I know that everything has to be ruins of the Empire and stuff, but realistically, like, not every planet is like that. There's desert planets and everything, and not everything has the Empire on it. Like, they don't hold yeah, everything, you, this so... Could, yeah. You're you're absolutely right. This could be an outer rim planet that hasn't been touched by the Empire at all. Hmm. Some sort somewhere out there. This um, does look like it's a fairly advanced kit though. This is probably not a kit that would be for beginners. Uh, I, I mean, mean I could be wrong. I don't have the instructions in front of me, but that's I mean that rooftop alone is very multi piece. Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna it. say just I'm trying to look at it and it looks like almost each of those rows of shingles is, is a separate row. Yeah, because you can itself. see you can see where they sit when you go to the yep. picture. Yep, exactly. And so, yeah, that that it looks very much. That's not, not the only set, though. We also have nope. like an actual set, which is essentially it's the rest of the village. You've got a giant town hall here in the center. You've got a defensive tower type thing. You've got a couple of smaller a, buildings and a mill of some sort. With the water mill. Yep. This is um, just really... Market, I love the round yeah. building. Like it's clearly yeah. a, it's a homestead of some kind, but you don't get... Because creating round things with MDF is really hard. Um, They've done it really well here. This is that really almost, nice looking stuff. That almost looks like a blacksmith. So if you look on the... Uh, click on the actual... Oh, yes! Of the, you got the blacksmith forge and like yeah. an anvil of some sort on the side, so I think it's a blacksmith shop of some sort. Um, well which spotted. You don't you don't see that very often in in buildings. Of no. That age. Um, and I kind of I, I skip past the back because usually there's not really much exciting on the back. It's just more of the building, so I didn't yeah, even I notice. Uh, and then we have the yeah the big town hall, which is like as you would expect. It's Big giant pillars, roof removes again. Multiple different Actually, ways of building it, brother. Oh no, it's it's um two story. It's two floors. It's a two story building. Yeah, you've got the this that first building, first picture with the roof on has the two balconies that's looking down into the center row, and then that second picture has those two balconies removed. So that's yeah, that's pretty cool. I love that. Uh, and then, like, there's a little bit of scatter with, like, wells and little stalls and stuff, which you always need. And then a little, yep. little, 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 little house, which is little and cute. You'd probably fit two or three minis in it. Yeah. And then you got the water mill, which you mentioned earlier. And then the defensive tower, which all comes That's apart on every level. That's a sawmill, actually. Is it? If you... Yeah, you pop, you you look at the picture with the roof off of it, and you got a big, huge bandsaw with the trough that the wood would go down. Are you talking about the tower? No, the the water mill piece. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. No, you're right. I'm thinking I don't see Which, anything like that in the tower. <laughs> no, not in the tower. No, not in the tower. Definitely not in the tower, but the, the water mill piece, yeah, it's it's actually a sawmill, which, you again, you don't see very many pieces like that. No, yeah. They've done really well with the set. It looks really, really good. I mean, not that, that I mean, we don't touch on the War Cradle terrain a lot just because look, there's a lot of terrain companies out there. Uh, but they do have some really nice stuff. I think this might be the best set they've done, though. Um, but for my money, this is easily the best set they've done. And then the longer building at the end almost looks like another version of that first building that we looked at. It's got kind of got a coal fire pit centerpiece. Yeah. And then some long tables and 
probably not for the here. elite soldiers. This is for the, this is for the scum or the outside. The the come to the village. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, like it could be like a med hut type thing. Depends on how you want to build it, really. Yeah. Because if you were going to build this, personally, I'd probably have the fire pit as removable so I could move it around. Yeah. Uh, just, that's yep. just my initial thoughts. Uh, the only other thing I'd probably say is on the side here, like the windows on the side, you're going to want to be careful with those. They will scratch very mm. easily. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like it's three mil terrain, so it won't be fragile. But it's certainly not something that you um, want to be throwing around in the back of your car. Uh, this is really yeah. nice stuff. I really like this. You, you buy this set and, and maybe get a couple extra towers and get a couple extra small little huts and stuff like that, and you'd have a nice little village. Yeah. Uh, it is in 35 mil scale, so um, if, it's, if you're playing something that's true 28 mil scale, it's probably going to look a little big. Uh, but not by that much. But most games tend to be heroic, so you probably will get away with it. You can almost um, use this for D and D, and almost get away with it. Yeah, but with being D and D, it being slightly bigger actually helps too. The only downside with D and D is you don't really have a grid. That's really your only problem. So you're going to have to go back to uh, measuring stuff. Yeah, that would be your only problem. But otherwise, yeah, this would work great for D and D. I agree. Moving on, I need to give credit to Beasts of War for this next story because that's where I got it from and that's where we're looking at it. Offspray Games are going to be previewing two of their upcoming games at the UK Games Expo. So first up we have Undaunted Stalingrad, which appears to be like a dungeon crawler type thing, but for World War II. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, it does. Fighting moves from Normandy and North Africa to the east front buses between the germans and the soviets uh, and village rails which is a little train game this one looks a little smaller a little more simpler by the look of it um so if you are from the uk and you're going to the uk games expo uh which if you live anywhere even vaguely near it you cannot miss this it's i would argue one of the most i would say it's Probably up there with Gen Con as far as events. Mm -hmm. The UK Games Expo is really, really good. And you quite often get teasers of new upcoming stuff and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's huge. Uh, I would definitely recommend going to this if you were there. Sadly, we're not, so we can't. No. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me enough to have really cool stuff. But I, yeah, I saw this and I was like, no, I really want to talk about this because, I mean, I don't know really a lot about the games, but they look fun, especially that first one. That Undaunted yeah. looks great. Yeah, it almost looks like each of the tiles is a different city block of Stalingrad that you're having to move through. Yeah. Somehow. So. I mean, there's no minis. Fun. It's very much a board game, but that's, I mean, that's fine. Um, yeah. Not everything has to have minis. No. Nope. If everything had minis, that'd kind of be boring. Uh, moving on, returning to Conquest, because we're talking about Conquest, I'm going to put our referral up on the screen, because if you're interested in Conquest, and you'd like to purchase some stuff from Parabellum's online web store, if you buy it through there, you get a 10% discount, and you help support us at the same time. Uh, this is, honestly, I think this is actually a really good thing. Now, every time it... Uh, game comes out with a new starter box, they always try to make it better than the previous one. And the people that bought the previous one always kind of feel like they're left in the dark. It's like, well, I don't get any of the new stuff. I'm going to buy all of the stuff all over again just so that I can have the new stuff. And I'm sorry, Games Workshop, but it gets really annoying. Um, Conquest are bringing out a core box upgrade. So this is an upgrade kit for the original two-player starter set. So, obviously, you get your new rule books because, well, you're going to need those. Yeah. But you have two force grown drone command sprues because they were not in the original. You get one household knight command sprue that wasn't in the original. You get a man at arms command sprue, crossbowman command sprue, 
Uh, I already touched on the rule books. You get new command cards for everything that wasn't that's in the new one that wasn't in the old one. Uh, you get an extra infantry base and stand, uh, and obviously your assembly instructions and stuff. This I think is something that everybody should be doing. Now, as much I, I did just throw salt at Dam's workshop. It's probably not really possible with the way that they design their kits because if it's a new kit, it usually replaces the old one. Yeah. Um, and I mean they do sell the rule books and stuff separately. But when it comes to, I mean, this is something that's really, really simple. And quite frankly, it's it's kind of a really easy way to make money. Yeah. Like the, so Company Heroes, the game that I helped kickstart uh, a couple of years ago, they're having a 1.5 Kickstarter next month. <coughs> Sorry. And they are doing the exact same thing. So everybody that bought yep. the first edition... Uh, they kind of tweak some stuff, some changes with the the starting stats, and so they're doing a upgrade kit as part of their kickstart of it, so we can upgrade our stuff to the version two stuff. Mythic Games awesome. did the same thing with because they made some tweaks to their game when they did the round two, and they basically just threw the rule, the new version of the rule book. In. Yep. So yeah, and then the Kickstarter for Comfort of Heroes will be selling the version two, and then like those of us that bought version one can upgrade our kits and then buy additional stuff as version yeah. two so yeah i agree conquest and and mythic and and um who does company heroes bad crow games yeah, yeah. putting together these type of upgrade boxes spot on what the industry yeah. needs it's and look it's not just a matter of well i guess i need to put something in like yes obviously digital rule books exist uh but this is also like it's a really easy money maker. Like you're not making anything. Like this stuff has already been created. All you're doing is throwing it in a box, um, and people will buy it. I mean, if people don't yeah. want to buy an entire box set again, they will. I mean, some people it. will. Some people will. If there's stuff in it that they need more of, they will buy it. But for those that don't and already bought all of the extra stuff they need, this is a no-brainer. It just makes so much sense. Hey, am, so I, am I buying this? No, because I'm not playing either of those armies. But I would recommend it for those that bought the old version of the starter set. It just makes yeah. too much sense. Yeah, I'll be buying a, a full-on box of the version 2 stuff just so I can have more maps, so I can have larger games. But yeah. other than that, that's probably much all I'm going to be buying so, of the version 2. Um, have I gone past the story? No. I don't know which one you trying to look for. No, it's okay. It's just next. Yep. All right. Blackside Studios. These are the guys that did Don't Look Back, the game that I fell in love with. And everybody should play Don't Look Back. It's amazing. Uh, they are publishing a new game by somebody called Corey Sylvan. Uh, and this is a fantasy game. So it's a 32 mil game. So fairly fairly on average with what most people are doing now. This is just a preview that we're looking at. So it's it's very, very much fantasy, and it's very much coming soon. Um, if you do join the Black Sight Studio groups on Facebook, so the Don't Look Back one is one that I'm a member of, for example, uh, then they will be teasing stuff as this gets closer. They always do that. Um, Yasiga? That's my that, attempt. That, that's my attempt to say the name. That, I think that's close because I was going to say Yasiga too or something like that. Yasiga. Uh, we do, however, have some preview for some terrain. Now, I really like the look of this terrain. I want to say especially the cemetery, as much as it's just a cemetery. But I mean, come on, this is really cool. Uh, plus. It's all modular, so you can change the way that it all looks. Yeah. Yep. I love this. Um, buy one or two sets of this, and you could create anything you wanted. I mean, those walls don't just look like you could use those walls for anything, really. Um, I mean, it's 
very yeah. much gothic cemetery but you could use that for anything i love the mausoleum and mm -hmm. everything it's i love it really nice no i agree you you buy a couple of sets of those and you'd have a nice nice gated wall for some haunted house setting of some sort for yeah. don't look back or a, a D and D adventure or, or whatever yeah, kind of scenario. Uh, the Blakehurst village comes with quite a lot of different sets, uh, including a really nice looking barn, quite frankly. Wait, is it a barn? Yeah, no, it's an inn. Um, there is a barn. Oh, I was right. Never mind. There's a barn and an inn. Um, yeah. Again, I kind of really like this. It, it kind of, like, it feels like it's inspired by the same sort of stuff that we were looking at earlier, but it's very much yep. the same thing. And I think that smaller building is another blacksmith hut. Yep, it is. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different than the other style, but yeah, I think it's, it's kind hut. of, it, it's a more modern, modern is the wrong word, but like where the old one was very much early blacksmithing years, this is kind yeah. of, they've started to perfect what a blacksmith is. And yep. it's kind of like, you can see, the inspiration from the Vikings, but this is clearly Vikings that have moved into the rest of Europe. Is the way it feels to me. The stockade. Uh, I want to say this is Irish, actually, because that's yeah. Irish. Cel that's Irish Celtic knotwork in the. Declaration. Yeah, in the blacksmith. Yeah, bar. yeah, I agree. It looked Celtic of some sort. Uh, did you see the stockade in one of the pictures with the bar? Oh, I missed the stockade. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I can see it's in there in the background. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's one in the, in, if you look at the second picture out of the the, the row column there, there's a really close-up. So this is where we'll be picture. putting George, because this is where he belongs all of the time. Yes. In the um, stockades. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we have oh, a Fantasy Resin Upgrade set. So this is just an upgrade set for the buildings. Try and make them fancier. This is where all of your extra fancy windows and stuff are all coming from. So go back to the the building set. Yeah. And look at the rectangular building and look at the, what is it, third picture down. Look at that top crossbar of the wood that's sticking out of the roof. That almost looks like a dragon head of some sort. Could you almost see like the the crown of his head and his eye? Or am I just missing something? No, I think you're right. I was yes. No, I think you're right. That just looks cool. Yeah. Um, so the upgrade kit is not that one, it's this one. So they do kind of like if they give you pictures of what it all looks like and it's all of this extra fancy decorations on the outside. Uh, there's just more detail in that than what there is. Mm -hmm. So if I bring up a picture of, let's use the inn because that's the one that they're using an example of. It appears that all of those details are the resin kit. So I have a little bit of criticism. They probably should yep. have been picturing it with and without. That is my big. I thing. agree. I agree. No, I stand corrected. If you buy the set, it comes with it. Okay, but never mind. Oh, you, yep. It, 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 come, it comes with it. They're just giving you the opportunity to also buy them separately. So that's yep. the, yeah. No, that that's that's fine. Uh, I really like this stuff. Like this is this is signs of like Black Sight Studios make some really good terrain, like, like really good terrain. We've talked at length about that Lakeside set a number of times. Um, I think George is on record saying that that Lakeside cabin is his favorite piece of terrain he's seen from memory. Yeah, I like I said, really really like it. All right, moving on. To a galaxy far, far away. It's not um, just a galaxy far, far away. It's it's MCP as well. True. But, but yes, we are talking about AMG and their lineup that they have for their mini upcoming mini, mini extravaganza that will be here in two weeks. And boy, that they have a lineup. 
to discuss. Yep. Through the the three days. I am luckily going to be on leave uh, those three days because uh, my wife will be out of town. So hopefully I can listen in to a couple of these while I'm watching the kids. But starting off, they've got, I mean, they had their opening ceremony, which is just kind of what they go over uh, yep. for about a half hour, just kind of go what they're going to talk about a little bit. And then they have the breakout sessions. And the first breakout session is all about Legion and the title of it. I'm guessing they're going to be going over the Shadow Collective. Yeah. Because it's that's all it is. Scam and villainy. So what else are they yep. talking about? And then they've got a couple of painting uh, ep- uh scenarios uh this is the way to paint so i'm not sure what one's that going to be but they're going to be doing nick fury next and then talking about some x-wing stuff uh for a couple of rounds and then one other one that i'm looking forward to granted it's a little late for me uh being here on the east coast and everything on the pacific coast uh is armada fleets and then ewoks is way late so i'm gonna have to probably catch that one friday morning just watch the recast yeah um I'll have to watch all of this on recast anyway. Yeah, because of your time, exactly. Um, And then starting out Friday, they've got Marvel Crisis Protocol, uh, Earth to Asgard. So I know they've been announcing a lot of Asgardian stuff. So we've got, we've seen Heimdall. Yep. And Uh, Yeah, he came with Heimdall. We just talked about him. (laughs) Yeah. Who is it? Uh, The Executioner? uh, Scourge. Yeah, it was Scourge. Scourge, yep. 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 And then uh, we go back into the Star Wars Legion hobbying. Um, and then some Outer Rim stuff for Legion. And then we go back to MCP with shields, uh, painting some shield units. And then back to creating an X-Wing diorama. And then end of day for Thursday or for Friday. And then Saturday is more MCP, the Mad Scientists and Crime Lords. And then... Painting battle droids for Legion, and then going back to MCP for Asgardians, and then a f- this is the one that I'm looking forward to, full of surprises, a Star Wars stream. So, so this will be all fingers, of the stuff that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, and crossing my fingers, I hope we see some new Armada stuff because uh, my local group kind of when we first saw this, people were saying, "Well, are we, what are we going to see during that that." line up and i just like i hope we see some star wars armada stuff because if they, they cannot... don't if they don't show some armada stuff they've got problems i agree i wholeheartedly agree because as an armada player and 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 we've discussed this multiple times back when fantasy flight had it they had issues with releases and mcp or amg has had this now for a year and a half or so and yeah they did they said they weren't going to do anything this year with armada if they don't put anything out they're going to see either players one players are very going to be are going to be they will have an if if they don't they're going to have an accident that exactly i can see that happening too i can see players if they don't see anything they're gonna be like i'm done i'll on my stuff because what's the point of playing if if amg is not going to re- support armada anymore yeah so so especially, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the the you probably didn't because it was on the Legion side. They are starting to crack down just like Games Workshop is. Oh yes, um, on, on all the three D printed stuff that was of various kits that were already out, and so actually, yeah, no, I, let, let, let's discuss that because I actually think this is there's been a lot of very very angry voices on this, uh, and so I do think that it's probably worth so for context. Um, a company has every right to protect their IP. There's no mm-hmm. argument about that. Every company has the right to do that. Uh, if you're in disagreement with that, you're already part of the problem. Sorry, but that that is... They have the right to defend their IP. They have their right to make money, otherwise they go out of business, and the industry doesn't exist. Uh, are there some companies out there that take that too far? Yes, but that's not what we're discussing here. Um, so, the ruling, and to be fair, this rule existed from day one. This is not new. They've just put a reminder out, basically. And basically what the response has been is that most of the groups in response to this have said, 
that they will no longer be allowing you to share stuff that is a direct copy of something or inspired by a mini that already exists. But it's if it's something that AMG are not producing, it's all fair game. Because yes. you can't protect you cannot protect something legally that doesn't exist. It, Games Workshop lost a case on this a few years ago. Just a fact of life. Um now, is there reason for people to be upset? Of course there is. But also, at the same time, you have to remember, this is not just Atomic Mass Games. The Big Mouse the has a history of this. Oh, yeah. Now, there is a lot of people out there that do create 3D stuff from Disney properties, but all of those people know the risk that they're taking. But oh, sometimes yeah. Disney will be like, and they just won't pay much of attention. But every so often, but Disney make Games Workshop look like angels in this regard. Because yeah. Disney will randomly go after very small, insignificant people. And I don't mean companies, I mean small, insignificant people. Um, not all the time, but like when they do, they make a point of it. So th there is precedent here um now don't get me wrong I, I i get that there's a market out there for this and i have a 3d printer i'm not against 3d printing that's not what this is about because i know somebody's going to accuse me of being anti after my review of a product a few months ago. um this is purely and simply about atomic mass games have made a Point. But they have a Marvel property and they have a Star Wars property. Some of the two biggest lines out there in the world that and are they, popular these days. They have every right to try to protect that marketplace. Now, when Atomic Mass Games first released Marvel, the first thing that happened is everybody started flooding their own groups with 3D printing. And they immediately put out a response saying no 3D printing is allowed in these groups. So everybody turned around and opened up new groups so that they can get, then get away with it and started quite literally throwing the finger at AMG. Um, now, I'm not saying all of the groups did this, but there was two or three of them that were very much, no, Adam. screw you, we're going to do this in anger because you won't let us do it there. So for, the, for those groups that are now getting upset, you only have yourself to blame. I'm sorry. If you had have made more along the lines, of, and they're going to hate me for this, but if you had been more along the lines of, look, creating your own group and just doing your own thing and not being bitter about it, they probably wouldn't have come for you. You've done this to yourself. <laughs> sorry. You're welcome to hate on me for that, but yeah. they, have no, ev I they have every right. No, I agree. Um, but I showed some, I showed you some better pictures that Ewoks. You're gonna post those uh, in the video a little bit. I love the look of the Ewoks. They oh, like oh, I, I, I could share the Ewoks now. Yeah, go okay. For it. I, I'm gonna bring the Ewoks up now because now I can talk about something that I'm not gonna get attacked over. No, but, but I, I've seen them a couple of times in Facebook posts, but that is the best picture I've seen coming out from. The, any of the photos that I've seen through the our Legion book uh, yeah. group. And so this started with Star Wars Celebration Weekend. They showed off some pictures of the minis. So we've got one here that says Yub Nub. And I just love the fact that they've done that. Yeah. Uh, and then Celebrate the Love, which shows off more. Now I'm just going back. So on Yub Nub, the one in the middle is Wicket. It is Wicket. Yeah. Uh, I know the rest of them have names, but Wicket's the only one that I ever remember. Because he's the star of the movies that everybody hates. And then, yes, we've got the actual pictures of the minis themselves. Uh, I think it's fairly safe to say that you and I are both, buy both buying sets of this. So I actually... So I'll show you some of the stuff that I bought up at the local game store today. But the employee there was like, I was thinking about selling my my Rebel stuff. And then I saw these pictures of the Ewoks. And he's like, nope, I'm not selling my Rebels anymore. Because... <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I play Rebels, and yes, I will probably be buying a set or two of these little 
Cuddly Bears, because they look awesome. I have a very important question. What's that? Is that piece of terrain in the background near? No, uh, it's been out for a couple of years, but okay. it is actually a... Um, it's, it's, it's a piece of terrain that actually came with a couple of scenarios to play with the terrain piece itself, but... Just having it right there in front of the, as a background of the Ewoks is amazing based yeah. on the stories that we know where the Ewoks come from. And I love the line. fact that you, like, you can see where the logs get. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm 100% buying a set of Ewoks. I have no idea what I'm going to use them for, but I'm 100% buying them at one point. Um. We don't have release dates for this yet. I suspect no, we we'll, get, we'll get a release date during the upcoming week. It, what, if not, we'll get a quarter because uh, they usually have a quarter. They'll say coming this quarter of a year time frame. That way they don't specifically say what week or day of that quarter. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm with you. We'll probably have a, a good idea of when we'll be seeing this in terms of fourth quarter or, or third quarter this year or first quarter next year. So um, if, if I don't unbox this, Captain Socks will. Yes. Why, yes. why, why aren't you Captain? <laughs> Major. I know, Major. I did it on purpose. Yes. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will definitely be doing an unboxing of this. So yeah. some good stuff coming out with AMG and the Mini Extravaganza, um, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, no, uh, same here. Just, just in case my excitement wasn't obvious enough, I'm definitely yeah, I think this is one of the cool things that a company does is is have a two or three day little conference convention of their own just yeah. to discuss what they have coming up. Especially so. if it's a company that's big enough to get away with that. I mean, obviously, if it's a little indie project, you're not really going to, like, there's not enough to really talk about. Not without bankrupting yourself to try to do some interesting ones. Yeah. Right. We're going to finish the news with a couple of Kickstarters. And I'm going to start. I'm actually going to start with Batman because okay. um, I'm going to come back to the other one because the moment I start talking about the other one, I'm going to lose myself in it. Okay, so Monolith Board Games. These are the same guy. They've These guys have done a few Batman games now. This is their new season of it. Uh, these are also the guys that did the Conan game a couple of years ago, which I actually played very recently. It's a very good game. This is not just an expansion of the Batman game, though. This actually has a proper role-playing game as part of it as well. Um, which is interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that it's not the first Batman role-playing game we've ever had. Uh, but I find it interesting that they're doing two in... Uh, doing both in one Kickstarter, I think, is probably a little risky. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's exciting, but... I don't know. It's like just, I kind of feel like it would have been safer to do one and then the other. Uh, my assumption is that they're kind of using this as a chance to, because obviously you could purchase the original games as part of this, uh, so that helps them fund with that stuff without having to throw expense into creating it. Uh, if you load this up on Kickstarter, and the links will all be down on the bottom, like there is a lot of stuff on this page. This page yeah. goes forever. Monolith is another one of these games, uh, gaming companies where like they do big projects. Uh, the minis on this are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I mean, there's this Batman in the front here on the on the little um, gag on the little eagle thing because, of course, yeah. uh, and then. Ironically, there's one here that's labelled as Batgirl Cassandra Kane, but that doesn't look. I don't know that, nope. that that that's a Batman to me, but with I don't know that that's weird. Oh no, I can see the hair coming out. Never mind. Uh, Red Hood Red Hood looks cool. Um, I don't know who Ghost Maker is. Like legit, I don't know who that is. Uh, we've got Man Bat Commandos. Um, we got ninjas. We have rocket penguins. Oh my god, we have rocket penguins. Just, this is amazing. I just saw that. <laughs> I just saw. I was like, wait a second. I scrolled by it. And I was like, wait a second. Was that a penguin? Yep, there's a penguin with a rocket strapped on its back, and there's four of them. Oh. Oh, oh, you have no idea how. Oh, that that is amazing. 
Um, is this something that I'm going to kickstart? No, probably not, uh, because I don't need more board games that I'm not going to play. I have enough games that I'm not playing already. Uh, this is a really exciting looking project, though. Um, yeah. And, like, it's not like this is a project that's struggling. Like, this is well past a million at this point. Um, oh, no, that's Australian dollars. So it's at 853,000 over 200,000 goal. Uh, this is, like, this looks like it's going to be really good. Uh, in the role playing game, you can play as a hero or a villain. I kind of like the idea of doing the villain and trying to survive Batman. I actually think that might be more interesting than role playing Batman's friends or just someone from the city or I don't know. Because I mean bat like if you're role playing against Batman and Batman becomes the big bad in your eyes, that might actually be more interesting. Yeah. Are you a Batman person, just generally? No, I mean I've I've seen some of the shows and I I like them, but I am more of the Marvel. Yep, fan no, base. that's fair. I, I am generally more of a Marvel person, uh, but I do love Batman. I mean, I can't talk enough about Batman, but um, and it's not like I'm not one of these people where it's like, well, Batman can beat everybody because that's a silly argument. Um. I yeah, I really like this. And Monolith do make some really good really good games. Um, especially like the, the dungeon crawl type. Like this is their this is their wheelhouse. But I have some mixed opinions on this. The first one is going to probably treat the first one's gonna be fairly obvious the moment that some people see the little logo on this. Okay, so this game is called Household. Just to set the scene, this is based inside a mansion. The master of the mansion left like a hundred years ago and he never came back. So the master is dead. Nobody ever bought the house up again. But inside this house, it's filled with tiny little people. So for the people from the UK, we're talking the borrowers. Um, for other people, we're talking Lilliput or Lilliputians, yeah. which is the little people in... Um, Gulliver's Travels, so on and so forth. There's fairies, there's like, so this is, they call it the world's smallest role playing game, quite literally, because it's your insects and your spiders and stuff that become the bad guys in this. So it's very much, if people have played Mice and Mystics, it kind of has that feel. Uh, in that game, you're, you're playing as heroic mice. And you end up fighting against insects and stuff. It's not just insects and stuff in this, uh, but it's very, it very much has that feel. Um, so it's, but it's that feel in a fantasy world. I love this idea so much. Uh, so it's being done by two M, sorry, two LM Press. But this is where I potentially have my issue, because quite frankly. 2LM Press are just the publishing arm of CMON. So this is another CMON project. Very much. But that's not where my that's not where my issue lies. This is the eighth Kickstarter. Which means my argument against CMON is even more strong now. Yeah. I'm I'm probably backing this, in all honesty. I think I need to own this game. It looks too good not to play. Um, and, like, make no mistake, this looks amazing. I'm going to start scrolling through the artwork here. There are minis involved, which obviously will be made by... Simon. Simon. Um, but you've got guys here, like, keys are becoming guns. Yeah, I saw that. That, just... like, that looks awesome. The only thing that's cooler is people that are using half of a pair of scissors as a sword. Yeah. I, this is insanely good. Uh, so fairies, boggets. Boggets very much feel like your borrowers to me. Uh, slough are kind of like half human, half insect looking thing by the look of it. 
I have a feeling that all of these are based on, like, law from, like, original European law. Sprites, uh, because sprites and fairies were not always the same thing. That's kind of a thing. And then we have our picture of somebody's pulled apart a pair of scissors. And I love this. This is so much fun. So on the figurine set three, I like the one you, you got, you, like you said, you got the one that got hold of the scissors. It looks like a sword. And the very far left of that same row, you got the lady with the buttons. She's using the needle as a sword too. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's real. I didn't even notice that. That's brilliant. It's, it's pretty cool too. You got a guy here so, with a fork, and oh, well, it's yeah, bro- it's a broken too. fork actually. It's a broken fork in half, and using it as a pitchfork almost. So, like this is just so much fun. Like when I said I was going to lose myself in this, I I found this randomly last night, uh, and instantly fell in love with. It. The reason I'm falling in love with this is exactly the same reason why I fell in love with that. The toys are trying to find their kidnapped owner. Why? Yeah, I remember that. It, it that scratches one. exactly yeah. the same itch because it's such an exciting idea to me. Even their dice set that they have is pretty cool looking with yeah. the, heart, the face cards uh, symbology. Probably the only downside of this for certain people is realistically, you can't play with a normal set of dice. You have to buy theirs. Yeah, um, I agree. Because each it, of those it dice symbols, it gonna, it's going to be something different based on the rules. Yeah. I agree. Here's um, the thing I like about this. It'd be a very easy way to get people in. Like, if you want to get people role-playing of the younger age, this is a really easy buy-in. doesn't take a much of a stretch of imagination. Like, most kids know what fairies and sprites and all of that sort of stuff are. It's all through the cartoons. Um. Being a tiny little person in a giant little world, kind of, it just, it's so easy. Um, and quite frankly, you can buy into this at 30 bucks and just get the PDF version. Obviously, then you don't get the minis and everything. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how you, I guess that they will give you a PDF to create your own dice, or it will include a conversion. I, well, I, I, I scrolled down and because it talked about their dice. So there's six different sides to a dice that they have. They have the four mm. suits, a joker, and then a blank side. So you could play with this with a normal six sided set of and, dice. And then you just need you to convert just, them. There'd be a conversion exactly. table. Yeah. A six is your wild, a one is a blank, and then the five is whatever. One, pick your one of the four suits that you have there. I yeah. mean, but th- this, like is, this is something that's potentially extremely affordable. I mean, for physical, yeah. you're starting at 60, uh, and that comes with your initial book, um, and then the expansions all come in PDF form. That's probably, as far as physical is concerned, that's probably where the money is. Uh, Mouse Rider is everything, including a really cool-looking bookcase for everything as well. Um, all of your minis that they were showing up earlier are all add-ons. So that's, this is another one of those things where the buy-in is really cheap. If you want to lose yourself in this, your wallet could be hurting you for a while because there's a lot of stuff you can spend money on in this. Um, I assume it will be available at retail later. I don't really know that. Oh, no, the minis are exclusive to the Kickstarter. Oh, yeah, it does say that. Yeah. So... But you don't need minis to role play. Um, no. And there are some people that would argue that you're not role playing properly if you have minis. I think those people are wrong, but it's okay. I have done it both ways. I mean, it does work both ways, but yeah. Uh, stretch goals galore. We're already through quite a lot of these. But I love this so much. Yeah, it's, it is pretty cool looking. Uh, what are we sitting on? We are sitting on... It's only it's only got three days left to go. So if you're watching the video side of this, you're already too late. But if you're listening to the audio, you've got three days left. Um, and it was originally a $20,000 goal. It's sitting at 263 So it hasn't... It hasn't run away, but at the same time, it's, no. it's still... Most of this is the books. 
Um, so that's the exciting, like it's the most of this is the books and it would be delivered in June next year. So you're looking at 12 months before it'll be, assuming no delays, which have obviously look, it's a Kickstarter. There will be delays at some point. So another thing that I, I just noticed at the very top is it has digital stretch goals. And so it has like soundtracks. It has uh, artwork. Oh, so yeah, it's kind of cool looking. I mean, so it's, um, you got some of the maps, some of the, some other artwork, but I just saw the digital, not many games out there comes with their own soundtrack and to be able to get it as part of the Kickstarter. That's a cool. Yeah, I agree. And this is such a unique looking setting too. So, I mean, look, can music work? Of course it can. Uh, yeah. But when it's such a very different setting, maybe you kind of want something that gives you that fairy aspect. Um, Cause I mean, deep dark music is obviously not going to work. Um, I suspect that it's going to be very much tinkle tinkle type music. If that makes any sense. Yeah, and you could probably something find something on Spotify or pick your music digital music uh, venue that could work. But not many companies out there actually hire a, an artist and an orchestra to say, "Hey, create something for us for this Kickstarter project." Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I love this. Um, I suspect that my money will be going towards this. It's just a matter of what I can justify. Moving on. We're getting towards the pointy end. All right. So, Bot War have a campaign book coming out. This is coming out in July. Uh, Anthony teased this yesterday. Uh, he's kind of talking about what's going to be in the book and so forth. We have known that this has been coming for a while. Um, and it's kind of been... Well, it's, the question of when it was going to drop uh but his plans at this stage include an allies matrix so the ability for armies to be able to ally with certain other factions so the first one that comes to mind is your valiance are probably going to be allying with democracy foils probably with the deceivers um uh, it's going to include a map of democracy and the southern states uh, so it shows you where everybody is. That I mean, that that will be very exciting for certain people. Uh, it doesn't really jump out at me personally. Uh, some historical army lists, so you can play like actual things from the law. Uh, and then it's going to be your usual things of a few, a few stories, all of the art, updated FAQs, pretty pictures. Uh, the big thing for this is going to be a new campaign only. So there's yeah. going to be certain characters that will get versions that exist purely for the campaign. Um, so there's a doppelgangers, interceptor, there's a valiant basher. So p things that you can only use in the campaigns themselves. Uh, special missions, because of course there's special missions. Uh, and there's low, most likely going to be re a reduced turn limit on all campaign games. Because obviously, being a campaign, if you don't yeah. limit it, then campaigns tend to go forever, yeah. which is not always a good thing. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what this ends up looking like. Um, obviously, it doesn't exist yet, so we can't really comment too much, but uh, pretty artwork. Obviously. Indie. Definition. Independent. Type. Slang word. Jargon. So this week, we are looking at tiny furniture. Guess what they sell? Yes, that's right. They sell building. No, they sell furniture. Kind of obvious. That's shrunk down. But boy, does that look cool? Yeah. So all of this stuff. Well, most of this stuff is scattered terrain. I'm going to skim through a lot of this because we've already been spending quite a lot of time on the news, more than I expected that we would. Um, we've got a bushcraft tent. We've got junk town backyard. If you go up to the top here, there is a products catalog. That's how we've got to where we are. From there, you can look specifically at certain groups. So I'm going to go to the sci-fi stuff just for the moment, uh, just because that's largely what you and I are playing. Um, workshop desks, nice and dull. Car service. So you could set up a gunsmith workshop. Yeah, I saw Nuclear that. Nuclear bombs. Awesome. <laughs> Bank safes. Like, if you want 
to decorate the inside of your buildings, this is where you're getting this stuff. And it's incredible. Tool walls. But do does like none of this stuff really matters. You don't need this stuff, but it really adds flavor. But if you want to have like a lot of flavor and make it feel like the world actually gets lived in, this is where you do that. Yep. Absolutely. Trophy heads. I mean, oil barrels. I mean, you pick a genre, you can Rash find bags. something that's going to work. Arcade machines. Yeah. Work office, wicker fences, a clerk's with a clerk's office with computers and a desk and a chair. I mean, yeah. And then if I go to the fantasy and the medieval stuff, we've looked at a couple of these already. Treasure stuff, tables, Cameras. books, wardrobes, baker, like lots of, like, you got shopping galore. If you want to build a D&D world, this is your friend. Here you go. Yeah, absolutely. Because you got a, a full on camp set up. You've got a nice would you, carpet stove. Would you like to eradicate some ghosts? Because no human would ever stack books this way. Yeah. I can't see stacking books at? without thinking about ghosts. Literally, there's a st- uh, about seven or eight down, there's a literally a thing of stacked books. Oh, yep, yep. And I can't see that without thinking Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, dining tables, palisades, yeah, shark carcass, that's awesome. Carcass of a bull, that's that's cool too. Uh, torture racks with someone on the torture rack. Uh, you've got bed rolls and tents, including a full set of an actual camp set up. Full on execution day with with the Grim Reaper standing at the stock or standing at the gallows with someone hanging. From- Where's that one? <laughs> uh, uh, so you find the carcasses of the shark in the bowl. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Scroll down just a little bit further. And there it is. That's kind of uh, dark, but guillotine. I mean, with the the bucket of heads. Yep. <laughs> There's some really, really nice stuff on here. Yeah, that, it is stone cool. benches, staircases that you can use easily. Yeah, uh, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, this is a cool site. Yeah, I don't remember how I found this. Oh, giant spider eggs, or they could be alien eggs. Um, I don't remember how I found this. I came across this randomly. Um, it's probably something that got shared with me at some stage. Uh, these guys, I'm pretty sure are based in, yeah, they're based in Europe. Um, but yeah, like if you want to, this sort of stuff is really good for adding life to a game. Is it needed? No. Uh, but like if you really enjoy narrative gameplay, that's where this comes in. Uh, they do also have a Patreon if you would prefer to print your own stuff. Um, that's, there's a link on the page. You can look at that if you want. Uh, there is other stuff we haven't looked at. Like they've got like actual minis. They've got bases. They've got laser cut stuff. I just wanted to look at the actual, the stuff that excited me, like the unpainted, the, the, the extra stuff basically is what I yeah. wanted to look at. Cause that was like, like I said, there's a lot more here, but the, the scattered terrain was the stuff that excited me. There's lots of, lots and lots of other stuff. Dream, blue, crying, paint. And we're going to discuss some hobby. What have you been uh-huh. up to, Socks? So, playing Victory C. If you can't see in the background, my boy and I are about ready to start up a game of Victory C because today I haven't painted these yet because I just pulled them out of the box. But I got. What does that look like? Submarine. Submarines, yep, I got some submarines. So we're going to try out the submarine rules for Victory Sea. And along with that, I got some convoy ships. So we can do some uh, convoy hunting with the submarines and some destroyer escorts, some kind of scenarios and stuff like that. So uh, hobby-wise, that's what I've been putting together tonight. Actually, the first part of the episode, I was gluing the last little bits on. Um, he so was. over the next few weeks, uh, I'll probably be painting some stuff. Uh, probably, probably the Japanese submarines, and along with the Japanese or the the submarines, 
have some little uh little torpedo okay. boats. Oh yeah, right. The little, the little torpedo boats, the PT boats. Um so they came with the submarines as well. So be painting those all up and probably finish up my American fleet because the Jap the Japanese side, other than the new box that I got today, is all painted up. Um so that's what I'll be finishing up over the next couple weeks. Nice. Yourself? Uh, I mentioned earlier that I played a game of the Conan game from Monolith. Yep. Um, this is that's a game that I have legitimately wanted to play since it was kickstarted, which is I want to say seven or eight years ago at least. It's I mean it's old now, uh, but I'd never had a chance to play it. I did have friends that owned it, but never got a chance to play it um, because they live like an hour away from me, and the days that we did catch up was not the days that they were playing it. Somebody else randomly asked in the group that I play Bot War and um, Rashido with if anybody wanted to, he wanted to bring it along and have a game. And I, I threw my hand up immediately. I was like, Legit, I have wanted to play that game for a very long time. Uh, we were playing just one of the starter missions. It was a lot of fun. Um, I made a couple of mistakes. Like, I made a mistake of going inside because we had to find where this kidnapped person was. And I went into mm. a tent, and it cost me two movement because I've got to move the hide door out of the way, not yeah. realizing that that then meant that I could come out, but then I don't have any movement left. And then I was like, I ended up getting stuck inside the building for a whole turn, just standing there going, yep, this is really exciting now. <laughs> That's nice. a lot of fun, though. Um, I also played the Dune board game yesterday. So this is the new version yes. of the Dune board game. I had a lot of fun. I almost won, but then I didn't. Uh, I was convinced at the beginning of turn two that I'd lost because it just I, I was I picked a faction that starts very slow, and I just didn't see how I was going to come back at that point. Everybody was so far in front of me, uh, and by turn three I was like, oh, I actually might do this. Um, yeah, so that that's the main two things I have been doing. Um, I've also been t in talks with a couple of people about getting. And I've mentioned this a few times that we're starting to plan to get drop fleet and zone going again. More so fleet from yes. my perspective. Uh, but somebody locally um, actually reached out to me after watching a few of our videos and realizing that we were close by uh, because he bought into drop fleet recently but hasn't nice. played it and wants somebody to show him through. So that's awesome. I'm, yeah, I, I'm genuine for a few reasons. I mean, obviously, it's been. It's been a while since I've played Fleet at this stage. It's been pre-pandemic. Uh, so first things first, I need to go back through and remind myself of a few of the turn structure and stuff because it's got it's been two plus years at this point. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go, and I'm just going to forget half of it because it's been that long. I've had understanding a how a game works and how a unit works inside the game is all well and good, and we've never really stopped that. But the yeah. basics of how the game plays can be very different, especially when you're playing with somebody that hasn't touched it. So they're relying on you. Who knows? To... The, should know the rules. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I do, but I've got to refresh. So Yeah, no, I absolutely agree, because I've had to do that when my boys are wanting to, because my, my oldest is, will be 15 this year, and my second oldest will be 13 in December. And so they're getting to the age where I bought them a course at uh, two courses, the uh, Legion, because they're getting to that age of, yeah. ooh, dad's games are fun. Um, let's get them on ourselves. And so, yeah. okay, you want to learn drop fleet and drop zone? All right, let me go back into the books. Let me look at the version two stuff that has been has changed since TT Combat has taken over and refresh my own mind. Game works. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely agree. There is not but a version two of fleet yet, though. No, not yet, but of zone. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I've been up to. Um, Hobby-wise, honestly, I haven't done any hobby in the last fortnight. I've kind of been a little bit burnt out. I, I know that we've discussed this off, off camera, but I kind of I needed to kind of step away from hobby for a little bit. Uh, not so much because of the hobby itself. It's everything else that's been surrounding the hobby that I kind of I pushed too hard for too long there for a while. Um, so I kind of, I've taken the last couple of weeks off. Um, and I'm kind of ready to get back in to do some stuff again so nice 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 speaking of hobby stuff when are we going to start up our zone and fleet cup videos because we need yeah. to start 
planning that out. Yes. Uh, so yes is the only answer I have for you at this stage. We, we will. <laughs> no, I understand too. Lives are lives are crazy right now. Yeah. And and like I said, with me I, having to watch. My, I don't my see us starting that for at least a month. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be at least a month for me until I'm ready because my wife will be out of town for five or six days for her dad's wedding, and so I'll be watching the kids over the weekend, and so. Uh, I may that, have. That's some actually time. the next week. That's actually our next recording weekend that I'll be watching the kids. So I will try and get the kids in bed in time for the recording, but I can't guarantee that. So <laughs> um, I may have some time off in June that may help us because if I have yeah. time off, I won't have to work around my weekend then or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not promising the audience that's when it's going to happen. We're, we're, nope. we're still working. We will on discuss. This. And we'll we'll keep you guys updated on on how we are coming along because we got to set up a, a script of what we want to go over first off. So yeah. Talk nerdy to me. Yeah. So yes. Back to sleep at, this week. As as hinted at by Sock, this week we are looking at the heroes of the game. We're looking the at the scourge. Parasite. How could they possibly be the heroes when they're called the scourge? Because the UCM propaganda makes them out to look like the bad guys. Look, all they want to do is give your brain a hug. That's all it is. And then take over your body. Yeah. May, may, you may, maybe tear you from the inside out with their razor worms. Maybe. Yeah, but or their vampire they, bats or whatever they have, the, those little creatures. They're, they're just lovable. That's, all of this sounds lovely, doesn't it? Yes, of course it does. Let's move on. No, it's not like the Ewoks are all cuddly from Star Wars. No, it's not nothing like that. The Ewoks are cannibals. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Anyways. Ewoks, but anyway, yeah. All right, we are looking at the Scourge Light Cruisers today. Um, when it comes to the light, I actually think the Light Cruisers are fairly underrated for most of the army. Maybe not necessarily all of them, but most of them. Most of them. Yeah, um, or not so much because I mean we talked about the PHR one and yeah. just how it has mediums and and light broadsides with it, and it's pretty cheap and it's fast. So that one maybe not so much as some of the, other, but otherwise, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, all right. Would you like to start with the Strix? I can start out with the Strix. So the Strix has is ninety points. Uh, a piece, grouping, or a scan of 6, 8-inch signature, thrust of 12-inch, hull of 8, armor 5+, plus, 2-point defense in a grouping of 2-3, to three, so minimum 180 points for your army or your fleet. A uh, tonnage of medium. It has oculus beams with a lock of 3+, plus, attack dice of 1, damage 2 in front, and then has scald. We'll talk about scald here in a minute. And then it has a plasma tempest, 3-plus uh, plus lock, 2d6 plus 4, which is nasty for its close action weapon. Uh, one damage a piece, front side, also has scald and close action. So at minimum, you are rolling 6 dice on your Plasma Tempest. Maximum 16, if I do my math right. So, And that's close action. If you get yeah. a 16, uh, no one, unless you have Jakarta's or the Aegeus chip nearby, you're not going to stop that. No uh, close action, and then you top scald on top of that, where you're losing arm because of scald. Yeah, that, yeah. That so for those gonna... of you that are not aware, scald. If I get within my scanning distance, so the whole thing about scourge, well, like we talked on last episode, is I want it to be up close. Um, and scald when I'm up close means that I'm removing one from your armor. You're already at a disadvantage. The downside, of course, is that I have to get there first, which is not actually as easy as people think it is. The no, Scourge no. The, the scourge are good, but only if you play them right. You have to play them carefully in those first two turns for it to work. But if you play yeah. it right, then you get really scary. Just like the PHR, you, you're silent running a good chunk of the first couple of turns because you want yep. to get in and then go weapons free on, some, on with your stuff and get within that Scald range with the Scourge. Same thing with the PHR. You're wanting to go in and get with the broadside aspect of the PHR. And so, yeah, with the Scald, yeah, my, as a PHR player, my armor will go from a 3 to a 4. 
Yeah. I mean, UCM will go four to five. And so that's, that's nasty. Especially, like I said, with that plasma tempest rolling a, a potential 16 yep. with, and then rolling three or four, maybe five point defense to try and get rid of some of that. And then whatever not is coming right through your armor, especially not- if you get crit, especially if you get crits with that plasma tempest. I mean, it's, it's a nasty ship and you're, and you're bringing two of these. Yeah. You could easily take down a, a, a battle cruiser or, or cripple a battle cruiser and do some heavy damage on a battleship. With if you roll well enough between those two plasma tempests, but from both of them, yeah. If you bring three of these, three of them nasty. would be nasty. Yeah, three of them would be nasty. So now I need to channel my inner Robin Williams from uh, what movie is it from? I'm forgetting. Good morning Vietnam. Yeah, it's time to talk about the UK. And for those that are wondering, yes, that's what I say at the beginning of the opener. We did have somebody that asked us at one point because he thought I said something bad, but I don't. It's Yukai that I say at the start. I think it might be time to update that guy. I think Surely so I've said something stupid enough to replace that. All right. The Yukai is a scan of six inches, signature of eight. They've got 12 inch thrust, eight hull, five plus armor, point defense of two, groupings of two to three, uh, medium tonnage. There's nothing special. They have That's Oculus. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Oculus beams are three plus locked. One attack, two damage, and it's a front arc skulled. But this one also has Oculus beam array. There's one on the left, and then there's one on the right. They're both three plus. They both have two attacks. They both go two damage. All of this is skulled. Then they also have a plasma storm, but this plasma storm is 2d6 plus two. One D6 damage plus two. One D6. Oh, one D6. Yeah, sorry. Reading it backwards. Uh, uh-huh. One D6 plus two. Uh, scold and close action. So the plasma storm on this one is not as scary. But everything else on this is terrifying. Yeah, if you go weapon three with this thing, yeah, good luck. Especially with the two damage on all those Oculus. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing with these guys. Realistically, um... I don't know if you need to have both of them, but I do think it's no. worth considering both of them. Uh, that first one, I actually mm-hmm. think it would be worth taking three of them. I don't think I'd bother taking any more than two of these. Just because if you take too many of them, you're not going to have enough points because you want some of that heavier stuff too. You can't yeah. just rely on the light stuff um, yep. because the light stuff obviously will be gone. Because the risk with the light stuff is, like, they've only got 5 plus armor. So getting them up into that close action is not easy. You want to use, you want to use and hide behind your, um, like, your, your, um. Your wyverns, your. That, I was, like, the, the debris fields and stuff is what I was trying to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yes. If you have yeah. that option. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Because, especially if you're facing someone like the Shaltari, uh, Shaltari are your worst enemy in this game. You're really going to struggle with them, speaking from experience. Mm-hmm. Um, both of these are good, but you have to get them there. That that's the yeah. that's the thing because they are lighter ships. Armor. Yeah, uh, they're groupings of two to three. Either two or three would get you well. But the thing is, is you don't want to put all of your points here and not have enough to be able to take some of the bigger stuff that you want. You want some heavy cruisers in this army as well. Yeah. Scourge really don't have a lot of stuff that's bad, honestly. I mean, there's definitely stuff that's better, but there's, they don't really have... Like, whether Shiatari or, like, where they have that, those one or two, where it's just like you would just never take them. The Scourge yep. don't really have that. Everything has a place in in theory. Yep. Um, I personally really love the Yorkai. Um, but that close action weapon on the streets, the streets is just like, is nasty. I have had, I have had two to three in my two to three streaks in my list for a while. The last game I played, I actually didn't have any Yokai. 
Uh, but I probably should have. So you're looking at a minimum of 180 points with the Strix, a minimum of 190 with the Yokai. Uh, but I'd be very, very tempted to take the break. Uh -huh. On that Plasma Tempest roll yeah. alone? The Plasma Tempest is just too good. Because <clears throat> you're, you're at minimum, you're rolling two, four, six, plus another 12. You're rolling 18 dice minimum out of three Strix. If you got the lowest, if you got double ones on all of your D, 2d6 plus the fours. Well, you're, you're uh, ro let's talk about averages. So on average, you're rolling threes or fours. So let's say that's yep. seven. Uh, so that's so seven plus that's, four. So there's 11 dice there already. That's 33 dice you're rolling. Yep. On average. Like there's... You the Strix in particular, I would argue, out of the two, the Strix is the must take. But I'm still saying that you want both. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Just because the amount of skull or Oculus beans that you have on the your eye is yeah. nasty, especially when you got two damage apiece <clears throat> and two attacks on some of those. Um, the, the problem with the Strix is the Strix is a one-trick pony. That's the problem. It's only really good for the one thing which is getting close, firing off the close action. It's only really good for that one thing. The Yokai at least You're does right. have another, like, it does have another place. You could still take stuff from range. It's just not what it's, like, you want to get in close. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could try to take stuff from range with this, but that one Oculus Beam is not going to do much. You want to get in close. Um, so that's why I'm saying there's place here for both. Um, yeah, I agree. You you want to be a little bit at at distance and still shoot effectively. Pr take the yokai. You want to get in close and just shred stuff to pieces. Take the strix. Yep. Thing with sh the thing with scourge is you need to get there. So you mm -hmm. need you need to plan your route. You don't have the problem with the phr of having to plan two or three things in advance. You yep. do have the flexibility to be able to react to what your enemy is doing. But you need to plan how you're going to get there, especially if you're against the Shaltari, because against Shaltari, you're already at least two turns behind. Um, and, and, and I've never won scared. a game against Shaltari. I I have never won a game against Shaltari. And possibly the UCM would they have if they have the Limas that can uh, ping you from across the board. Yeah, with their active scanners. Actually, that's a good point. <laughs> Because then they can they can target you with their uh, burn through lasers from their new new Cairo, yeah, Berlin's or this anything with the the burn throughs and and then you're just a burning Hulk by the time you get up there. So yeah, I would say even even the UCM if they've got some of those. I mean, and, and that's something that I'll, I th I think a lot of players actually don't use as a special order very much the active scan ability. Yeah, um, very true. Because because you're you're in a sense lighting yourself up like a Christmas tree because you're getting a major spike and getting a minor spike. Granted, the Lima can do that at all times, and so UCM players that have that ability don't really care. Um, but you don't want to do that on a, on a battle cruiser or that. You don't want to active scan with a battle cruiser or a battleship. Um, yeah. So I think active scan is one of the lowest... And we can talk about this more when you get into the orders, but... Yeah. Um, when it comes to... Like we mentioned that you want to, You definitely want to be taking some heavier stuff. Uh, without going into specific ships, you want to take some stuff that has your stealth or your... Yes. You, you want your stealth rules. I can't think what the other one's called off the top of my head right now. Uh, and you want to hide behind those ships because then they literally can't touch you. Because the ship mm -hmm. that's in front of you, they can't see it. So, And then they can't see you because it's in the way. So that, that that's where you want to trying to go. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have them in the same battle group either. You can just run them up together. Full um, cloak. That's the one you're thinking full of. Cloak. Stealth and full cloak. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right. Moving on. Tournaments, demos, conventions, you know, that kind of stuff. So the first thing we've already kind of touched on, the mini stravaganza is happening from the 9th until the 11th of June. This is the Star Wars and Marvel stuff that we were talking about earlier. So we now know what's happening. It's just a matter of waiting to get there. So it's, what, two weeks away at this stage? 
weeks away. Yeah. Uh, UK Games Expo is coming up really, really quickly. That's the 3rd to the 5th of January. That's next weekend. Yep. Um, that's... And then we got, well, yeah, well, we'd already talked about that's probably one of the biggest in, U- in UK. Yeah. So definitely go. Uh, and yes, World Model Expo, which is the 1st to the 3rd of July. Uh, all of this is coming up really, really quickly. Where's the year gone? Uh, tickets are on sale. Uh, NH Idahoven Conference Center in Konigshof, Veldholm in the Netherlands. Um, Gen Con, 4th till the 7th. Badges are still on sale. Gen- oh, sorry, August, yes. Uh, badges are still on sale. If you're in that part of the world, you know you have to go. Like, if I wish Gen I could go Con. again. I wish I, I could go again. I oh. wish I could. I would love to go once. Uh, the one I am going to, though, is PAX Australia, October 7th till 9th. I have my three-day pass. If you don't have yours, you've missed out. Day passes are still available. You just can't buy the three-day pass. Three day pass anyway. um, otherwise, like, there's some really big, exciting stuff that's happening. But I, like I said, I will be at PAX. Uh, I will be wearing my getting table shirt so you can find me. Um, I'm going to try and get some interviews if I can. Um, it's just a matter of trying to organize everything to happen at this stage. I know I touched on this earlier, but I'm going to touch on it again. If you would like to support us, you can do so on Patreon. It's only $2 a month. Uh, it helps support the show. It helps eat up, it, it helps eat up the costs uh, for the hosting and everything on this. We We really... We really do appreciate the support that we have, but we definitely need more if we can get it. Patreon.com slash getting table is the Patreon. Uh, we also have Facebook.com slash getting table. That's where pretty much everything gets shared first. Uh, we do have a YouTube. You should subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash getting table. Please give us a subscribe. That's where all of our video content is hosted. Uh, there's usually two videos a week. I try to post them on Mondays and Thursdays. There are some weeks where there's extras, but that's usually when it is. And I'm trying to get myself set up so I can start doing some painting stuff of Victory at Sea or Legion or whatever. Yep. The next few weeks, month or so, I'll have some stuff as well. So, uh, If you'd like to reach out to the team, gettingtabled.gmail.com is the best way to do that. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, at gettingtabled. We do have a website, gettingtabled.weebly.com. Uh, and otherwise, the last thing, this is just for me personally, twitch.tv slash Jason the Bruce, uh, live Mondays and Thursdays. That's a good Anything one. from you, Sox? Nope. It's been fun. Uh, we'll have a lot probably to talk about because Shravaganza should be wrapping up, so we'll have some stuff, and then we'll have some other stuff that will be happening that Saturday that we'll probably won't get to based on um, you trying to review some stuff. So we'll have a lot of stuff to come and talk about. First with MCP and Marvel uh, yep. and Star Wars. So any, I'm looking forward to it. Any guesses that you'd like to make for the extravaganza? To be honest, I can't really think of anything. With, with everything that they've already announced so far for Legion side, um, I have heard of talks of Ahsoka. So that would make as sense. As a new commander for the Clone Wars. Um, so on that side, I can think of that. I can't really think of anything on the Galactic side for the Rebel, the Empire, Walks. Um, I suspect that we're going to get some minis from the Ben Kenobi show. Yeah, we could. Which we'll get we'll get the heroes that we don't have yet for that. I I could I could potentially see some Inquisitors. Yeah, uh, possibly from the Empire side. Uh, which I watched the last the the first two episodes. Have you seen them? No, yep. not yet. I know they're up. Oh my goodness. I, haven't, I haven't had a chance. Oh my goodness, you got to watch them. They're awesome. I have, so, I haven't been home. I know that. But yes, uh, for those of you who have not watched Obi Wan, the Kenobi series, uh, yes, the first two episodes are amazing so far. Um, so yeah, I could see some 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 of those characters, like the like I said, the Inquisitors. Um, yeah. So I also I also like my guess is like Legion, not Legion, uh, Armada. Armada. Like there needs to be something from Amada. They have a problem if there's not. Uh, I yes. suspect that we won't see as much for X-wing. I think X-wing will be the one where they don't. 
not I'm not saying they won't do anything because we know that they're doing stuff. But they've done a lot of stuff actually. That's probably one of the most active between Legion and, and X Wing. X Wing is the one that they can afford to drop away from a little bit, not stop, just draw back from draw a back. little bit. Yeah, if they if I they agree. don't have the bandwidth to cover all three games at once, that's the one they can relax on a little bit. I, I want a lot of bad blood still from the I, the, I, the transition. I, yeah, I I don't think I'm going to get what I want. The Gungans. I want some Gungans. <laughs> I want some Gungans. I wouldn't mind some Old Republic stuff. I don't think yeah. we'll get that yet. I do think it'll come, but I don't think we're going to get that yet. I, I, think it, I think it will eventually because we already have Cassian and K2 and Jin Urso from Rogue One. So they already have some of the Old Republic stuff. I want, um, I want IG-88. Yeah. Um, I want IG-88. I, I could see some of those bounty hunters, the IGs. Um, those we could even see some first order stuff in the future. Um, cause they have that for X wing. Yeah. They could, they could easily do that for Armada. They could, they don't have a lot of stuff. Um, for, in terms of ground warfare that we see in the, in those three sequels. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Yep. Definitely. Agree with you, though, that they have to, they have to do something with Armada. Yeah, definitely. So, so thank you very much, folks. That's it for today. Enjoy your sleep, socks. I will try. I have some sick kids the last couple of days, so. Hey. Yeah, not fun. But take care of yourself, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For listening to Getting Table, music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mattias at soundimage.org.